Today on Shop Nation, we add the last details to the built-in router table on my workbench, including a paddle power switch and a custom-built router fence. What's up you guys, I'm Travis, this is Shop Nation, and it's about time to finish up the router table build. More specifically, adding a safety paddle switch to the door and making a custom-built router fence with dust collection. And before we get to the router fence, which is gonna involve milling some aluminum on the router table, yeah, let's install that safety switch so that we can operate it safely. Now I'll start by saying that this step is already in the workbench plan, so really there's no excuse as to why I haven't mounted this switch yet. Ended up taking a couple of tries to really dial in the fit. Now I'm opting to mount this inside of the door versus on the outside like it's actually intended because, well, I think it looks better. And speaking of looks, I wanna hide that ugly wood edge. So I 3D printed the simple bezel to clean it up. It is all about those details. All right, we've got the switch mounted. Frankly, this is something I should have done a while ago. Now I can quickly shut it off should something go wrong during the next step, which is gonna be machining some aluminum on a woodworking router. Yeah, you uh, heard that right. I bought this angled aluminum piece that's gonna act as sort of the frame for this router fence we're gonna build. And in order to build it, I need to drill some holes, route some slots, and cut a big old opening in this thing. Now there's a lot of ways you can do this. Aluminum is fairly soft and you can cut with most woodworking tools. So I need to cut this thing down to length. I'm gonna do that on my miter saw. And I've been experimenting with some bits in my router table on what machines aluminum the best. And based on a little bit of testing that I've done, I've found that actually a conventional straight-sided router bit works really well. Just take little bites at a time, you'll be fine. But wear eye protection and be careful during this step if you choose to do this yourself. Now I was going back and forth on whether to buy a fence itself that works on my table and the T-Track I have, and ultimately I just decided to build one, but it's very similar to the ones that you can buy from all the big name brands that you know. So if you don't feel comfortable cutting this aluminum, buying one might be a pretty good option. The advantages to building it yourself, obviously, is you can customize it to look however you want. Well, let's go start cutting some aluminum. Now here's a good trick when you need to make precise marks on something like metal. First, use a Sharpie to fill in the areas that will be marked. This is gonna create a contrast for the next step. Which is to scribe or score your marks using something sharp. The shiny exposed metal underneath the blue Sharpie will stand out making it easy to see. And always remember to center punch for holes. There is an actual bluing compound for doing this stuff, but if you don't have that, a Sharpie works great. You'll get nice, accurate holes if you take the time to center punch. Drill bits really tend to wander on harder surfaces like metals.
Next is to quickly deburr the holes. And then countersink if necessary. Let's take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Green Chef. Green Chef is a certified USDA organic company, which essentially makes eating easier for you and your family. They have dishes for a variety of lifestyles, including vegetarian, vegan, paleo, and even keto. Now, I've personally used Green Chef in the past, and it is so easy. They basically take the guesswork out of recipes, grocery shopping, portion control, tastiness, all of it. With tons of meal options, you never get caught in the same rut of repetitive meals week after week after week and you can switch up your meal plan whenever you want. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, go to greenchef.us slash shopnation100 and use the code shopnation100 to get $100 off, including free shipping on your first box. $100 off. Again, that link will be down in the video description below and let's get back out there. Okay, so now the scary part. Be careful during this step and be prepared for disaster, AKA anticipate how it could go wrong and stay out of the way. The key is to go slow and make sure you're engaging the bit in the right direction. You'll notice I have two temporary fences set up for this. One's dedicated for the top of the slot, while the other is used for the bottom of the slot. This is so I'm always pushing the right way. Another cool trick I used is to use some temporary fixture blocks to hold the piece at 45 degrees so I can cut out the center opening on my bandsaw. I gotta say, it worked like a charm. Now it goes without saying that everything I'm using, including materials, tools, whatever, I will link down in the video description below, so go check that out if you're interested. All right, and with that, that wraps up the part I was most worried about in this project, and that is getting this piece of aluminum milled down to its final shape with all of the slots and holes and big opening cut in it. So overall, I am pretty dang happy with how this turned out. I will say it was mildly sketchy in parts, so if you're at all nervous about doing this, just skip this step and go buy a fence. But if you're up for a challenge, give it a shot. So with the aluminum piece complete, I just need to cut the stationary face and both movable faces that I'm attached to this frame. Now with my original plan, I was just gonna use plywood or maybe MDF, but because I have a sickness and I wanna take every project to the next level, I went with colored MDF. Now I bought this stuff online. This is extremely hard to find here in the US. I think in Europe, it's a lot easier to get your hands on. I'll put a link down to the supplier that I used, but you can buy it in either 18 inch by 18 inch or 24 inch by 24 inch sheets. And they have a ton of different thicknesses, including the most common varieties of three quarter inch and half inch. These holes actually don't go all the way through and will accept a threaded insert.
Now to cut the clearance slots in the stationary fence pieces. These don't need to be terribly accurate, they're just clearance. Adding this T-track on the top of the face is going to allow me to use something like a stop lock in the future. And finally, these knobs screw into those threaded inserts we installed earlier. So, what do you think? It seems like I come to the same revelation after every shop project like this, in that how did I live without this before? Just something as simple as having the power and e-stop on the outside of the table saves so much time and stress. But the biggest improvement, by far, goes to the router fence. And there are two big reasons. One is safety. I can now easily keep the items up against the fence and not have to worry about riding a bearing if there is one. And then also I can use things like feather boards to kind of wedge the piece down through there. Just makes it so much easier. But the second thing is dust collection. Holy crap. And I'm running the dust collection on the central vac that's located inside the workbench. If you wanna know how that whole system works out, go back and watch that build series. But basically there is dust collection down through the router lift cavity as well as through this hose, which comes in through this auxiliary port here. So both of those are open when I'm running the router table and I basically have no dust which is, it blows my mind because this is kind of a paradigm shift for me because every time I get out my router, I just assume that my entire workbench and workshop for that matter is gonna be covered in dust. This fixes that. Now, if you saw anything in the video that you want either more information about or wanna go by yourself, I will link those down in the video description below, so make sure to go check those out. Now, this is my favorite kind of project because it challenged me and my current skill set. So now I feel even more comfortable if I have to machine maybe a piece of aluminum on a woodworking router. I know that it's probably not the best way to do it, but it's possible. So you kind of got that tool in your tool belt. Now, before you ask in the comments, I'm sure I spent just as much making my own router fence as I would if I just went and bought one. This was more an exercise in creativity and just seeing if I could do it rather than a cost-saving endeavor. But even with that said, I'm glad I made my own. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, consider doing so. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like, and I'd love to hear what you thought about it down in the comments. This project in reality was the finishing touch for my workbench build, which again, if you haven't checked it out, I would urge you to go do that. That's a four part series. It was a lot of fun and there's a lot of people out there building this workbench. I will catch you guys on the next project and until then, keep pursuing, pursuing, pursuing shop greatness.